everyone depends on Earth's ecosystems and their life-sustaining benefits such as clean air, fresh water and healthy soils. While populations grow and natural resources are stretched among us, humans will need to focus more and more on conserving and managing these ecosystems in order to ensure sustainability. The Critical Ecosystem Partnership Fund, or CEPF, has become a global leader in enabling civil society to participate in and benefit from conserving some of the world's most critical ecosystems. It is unique as a funding mechanism in that it focuses on biological regions rather than political boundaries. The Maputa Land, Pondo Land, Albini hotspot is one such region. Remarkable for its high level of biodiversity, the Maputa Land, Pondo Land, Albini hotspot spans an area of nearly 275,000 square kilometers and includes portions of South Africa, Swaziland, and Mozambique. It also supports roughly 18.4 million people who are directly and indirectly dependent on the land for survival. The combination of high biodiversity and high population positions this region as a critical hotspot. The CEPF investment of 6.6 .6 million US dollars has allowed 59 different civil society organizations to benefit. Wildlands has a, an extensive array of staff and projects located within the hotspot and this has allowed us to play a really good role and be in a good position to act as the regional implementation team. Function is really to create that linkage between the partners, the stakeholders in the hotspot and the CEPF uh, secretariat which is based in the US. So it's really having the local knowledge, it's having the relationships with the stakeholders that guides the CEPF investment into the hotspot in the most efficient and effective manner. Large parts of the hotspot are under custodianship of the communities who have been living off and conserving the land for ages. With increasing population, the concern is that development can happen unsustainably and damage key biodiversity regions. A main focus for CEPF was the protection and management in undercapacitated and emerging protected areas such as Libombo in Swaziland and Maputo Reserve in Mozambique. When you talk about conservation in Swaziland and you go to communities, they're like, what are you talking about? We would like to have this, this Lubombo still protected and we cannot do it any other way except in engaging communities. Communities have been custodians, you know, of these same resources. And the only way to carry on is introducing ecotourism activities in the communities and uh, also show them how ecotourism can bring better benefits for communities. And through the Eco Trail, we think this Lubombo will be, you know, a biodiversity hotspot, but also a tourism hotspot. The community engagement or the participation part of this is, is a beautiful thing. We have done an ecosystem mapping with the communities to open their eyes to know how much resources they have in their area, how much is threatened, how much is still in abundance, what are the threats, how can we address them as communities. And that really creates the acceptance from the community like, wow, we, need, we really need this, but we have really achieved a lot. We have won the hearts of communities and convinced them that this is, you know, an idea that will work for them. Tourism was identified as a major economic driver in the region and several civil society initiatives were supported which encourage community-led tourism. Employment opportunities and skills development sees community members benefiting from the region and thus engaging with stewardship of the land. While traditional forms of conservation play a vital role in the hotspot, 
attention also needs to be paid to the corridors which fall outside of protected areas. In the Eastern Cape of South Africa, focus was given to the corridor between two national parks where the majority of the land is privately owned. This innovative approach resulted in large portions of newly protected land as well as a heightened sense of stewardship of the land surrounding protected areas. We really saw an opportunity um, with uh, sand parks for creating some kind of buffer or corridor, whatever you want to call it, between Mountains Zebra National Park and Camp Debu National Park. The Wilderness Foundation and, and CPF has got a long history actually of, of working together and their investment in, in, um, in this particular hotspot has been, has been incredible because it has definitely kick-started some of these activities. So it's been formalized as a stewardship program, or a, but actually stewardship in the true sense of the word is what you want landowners to be engaging with, you know, that you want them to be stewards of their land. Yeah, you know, there's a sense that, that, uh, that you're part of something bigger, which I think is really I suppose what makes it magic. You know, there are a lot of misconceptions around, around corridors and when we first started speaking to landowners in this area, you know, they all thought we were trying to take over their farms and tear down fences. It's not about that at all. What it is about is a new way of conservation, if I can put it that way. This recognises that there's a whole variety of land uses that can be compatible with conservation and that uh, in the corridor concept landowners can still continue their land use practices and those are all aimed at not degrading the land any further. What most of the landowners did go for was to sign up to be become a part of the protected environment. So that gives them legal protection for their land against uh, inappropriate developments like mining or whatever else might be not compatible with, with the land use in this area. And the benefit for, for national parks is that it secures the buffer zone of our parks, that we can work with landowners to, to conserve the land as best as we can. Adhering to the CEPF's trans-border philosophy, support was given to the projects which aim to maintain and restore ecosystem function in the highland grasslands and bondoland corridors. An innovative collective in Matadiel focuses on improving catchment-based land management through alien plant clearing as well as progressive community cattle farming practices. Better managed upper catchments result in positive impacts for the people and ecosystems in the lower regions of the catchment. Grasslands are, are important for both the maintenance of the land and the soil resources, but they are also important because they are a resource that is extensively utilized by local communities. It's about livelihoods, really. It's about community livelihoods and maintenance of the ecosystems. If the resources are in good condition, it will make sure that the water yield in quantities, both quality and quantity, will be good as it goes downstream to the other one million people that are reliant on this resource. Our main mission is to build stewardship capacity amongst communities here and civil society role players as well as the state to try and collaborate to save this beautiful infrastructure, to, to retain what is here and restore what has been damaged through enabling people to be better stewards of the landscape. The CPF funding has facilitated, I've said, the partnerships and the collaboration, the bringing together of people, the sharing of, of ideas, the sharing of experiences, the sharing of, of, of stories, also the learning ex 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 exchanges. We've had multitudes of learning exchanges which have been facilitated through the CPF funding. It's catalyzed a lot of conversation. It's, it's unlocked people's misperceptions and opened our minds up to actually what all the different role players have got to offer. The community is very, very happy about the change over the grazing land. We felt very alone and in a bit of a vacuum for a long time. 
Um, and through the CEPF intervention, we connect with a whole bunch of others. And we now have an alliance of amazing partners. So CEPF funding has given us a civil society, a voice that the state is listening to. They're taking us seriously now.